the first question is, is this pool isolated or is it connected at all to other wetlands or water bodies? And then we also want to know if there are any inlets or outlets, that is if there's any streams or channels that are flowing into or out of the vernal pool. So when you look around this pool, you can see that there are no um, wetlands or water bodies uh, next to or connected to this pool. Now in some cases, you may not be able to see all the way around the vernal pool because maybe there's some vegetation growing in the pool or the pool is really large. So in that case, um, you're gonna, you might have to walk all the way around the pool to be able to tell for sure if it's isolated or not. During each monitoring visit to the vernal pool, we're going to record uh, water temperature if there is water still in the vernal pool and if there's enough water to take a temperature reading. If you can purchase a thermometer, something that's you know, maybe a little more fancy like this one, or you can use you know just a fairly inexpensive and uh, pool thermometer that you can pick up at you know any probably local retail store. And what we're going to do is um, take three temperature readings: one temperature reading at one end of the pool about uh, six or ten uh, feet in from the edge of the pool, another reading in the middle of the pool, and then a third temperature reading um, at the other end of the vernal pool, again about uh, five or ten feet then in from the edge of the pool. And then we're going to take the average of those three water temperature readings. And when you take your water temperature reading, you're going to want to take the temperature reading uh, at about six to eight inches below the surface of the water. And it turns out a lot of these pool thermometers are about that size, so it works perfectly for you to set it in just and leave the, um, have the top of the thermometer be at the water surface. And you'll wanna leave the thermometer in for a couple of minutes before you take the reading. So I'm reading about uh, 64 degrees. Then we're going to want to take a reading again at the middle of the pool. And just wait a couple minutes. Sometimes in some pools, the water temperature might be slightly different um, at different parts of the vernal pool because you might get one part of the pool that's a little sunnier than another part of the pool. So that's why we take the three temperature readings and then take an average. So it's actually about 62 or 63 degrees here, so it's a little bit lower. And then we would take one more reading um, at the other end of the pool, and then again, uh, record uh, all three readings, and then record the average of those three water temperature readings. During each vernal pool monitoring visit, one of the things we want to know or record is the maximum pool depth. So that is how deep the water is at the deepest part of the pool. So if this is your first time going to your vernal pool and monitoring it, how do you know where the deepest part of the pool is? Now if you said it's probably the middle of the pool, then you're probably right. And so there are two ways that we can either estimate or record um, water depth on the field form. The first way is if you can use these different categories, starting with uh, no standing water, then or zero to six inches, which is ankle deep, six to 12 inches, which is shin deep or between your ankle and your shin then, 12, 24 inches deep. So that would be up to you know your knee from your shin to your knee, 24 to 36 inches deep. So that's up to your hip, hip deep, 36 to 48 inches. So that would be chest deep or up to your chest and then deeper than 48 inches or unknown. The other way is um, if you have a meter stick, like this one here, which is a metal one that I just purchased at a local uh, hardware store, you can actually use it to measure the water depth as you walk out to the middle to verify if that is the deepest part or to be able to tell um, if there are other parts in your pool that might be deeper. So why don't I go ahead and uh, let's find out what how deep the pool is. So here's uh, 16 inches. Here's 22 inches. And as you can see, it's getting deeper. <laughs> and here is about uh, 25 inches then. So 25 inches 
would put it in the 24 to 36 inches um, hip deep category as you can see from the water depth on my legs that it's almost up to my hip. <laughs> During each monitoring visit we also are going to record the water level in the vernal pool. So that is how full the water, the water is um, in the vernal pool on the day of your monitoring visit. And there are different categories that you can check for this for water level, um, whether it's full or nearly full, which is 75 to 100 percent full, partially full, 50 to 74 percent full, less than half full, 25 to 49 percent full, or dry or mostly dry, 0 to 24 percent full. So what we're looking for here is you would look along the edge of the vernal pool and try to figure out where is the highest point of the vernal pool that it could fill or the edge of the basin, the depression of the vernal pool, and look at the water level in relation to that in terms of um, how full the pool is and also how deep the water is. You can also look at hints in the pool. So for example, you can look at the logs that are in the pool and see where the water line is and um, maybe how much of the logs are exposed. And also if you look at the base of some of these trees, you might see like where there's um, a dark uh, water line there at the base of the tree trunk and then where the water level is now compared to that water line to give you an idea of how full this pool could be and what is the current water level. So after looking at this pool, based on um, how much of the depression is filled with water and the water line, um, I would say that this pool is full or nearly full, which is 75 to 100% full. One of the things that we're interested in finding out or learning about the vernal pools we have in Michigan is their size, their um, area how big the vernal pools are in Michigan in terms of uh, minimum area, maximum area, average size, average area. It's really hard though to measure area in the field um, unless you have something like a GPS unit. And so instead um, what we're going to do is measure the um, or estimate the length of the pool at the longest point and also the width of the pool at its widest point and then we can use those measurements to um, estimate or calculate pool area. So one way that you can measure pool length and width is uh, you can use a measuring tape. So if you have someone who can help you, you can stand um, outside of the pool. You don't have to stand inside the pool. And then have one person um, stand where they are parallel or line up with uh, the edge of the pool. And then have the other person take the measuring tape and walk down until they are uh, parallel with the other end of the pool and then um, take the measurement that way. So in this case, this pool is 70.5 feet long. And then you can do the same to measure uh, width of the pool. Another way that you can estimate pool length and pool width is by pacing. So pacing is where um, you can figure out the length of a pace, which is equal to two steps. So here I've got a measuring tape and I'm going to take two steps and that equals a pace. So go with, you know, sort of your normal stride. And then I'm going to um, walk down. I can walk down to the other edge of the pool, counting how many paces it takes to get to the other edge of the pool then. And then take those number of paces and multiply it by how long each pace is to get, in this case, um, the pool length. So we can demonstrate. Two, one pace, two paces, three paces, and so forth. So you just have to remember um, with the pace how uh, which foot you start off with and that a pace is two steps. And so in this case, let's say that uh, it took me 10 paces to get down to the end of the pool times six feet is the distance of my pace. So then in that case, pool length would be 60 feet. And you can do that same thing then again um, with pool width by pacing.